Alright, so I'm going to teach you today about horizontal asymptotes and limits at infinity. So, um, the thing we're the thing we need to know and the kind of fun general function that we're going to be basing all our uh, our rules and laws off of will be this: some function of where it's stated as some numerator called n of x over some denominator d of x. Now, why is this only a rational function? Well, because horizontal asymptotes and limits at infinity um, only exist in rational functions. So, basically, when we say limits at infinity, we want to we're saying what happens to the function as x approaches positive or negative infinity. Okay, so. Kind of the best way to introduce this kind of idea is with an example. So let's take, for example, the function 1 over x. Now the function 1 over x, if we want to see how it behaved at infinity, let's just kind of plug in infinity. So f of infinity will get 1 over infinity, which is not a number, but it is a limit, it's 1. Now, Okay, so we know at infinity our function equals 1, but what does it do as it goes from, say, a normal number, like x equals 2, until it gets bigger and bigger and bigger to 2,000, to billion, to trillion, all the way up to infinity? Well, as our number gets bigger, let's say 10, we'll have 1 over 10, which is kind of a small number, and say x equals 100, which is an even where x is equals an even bigger number, but it makes our function equal to an even smaller number, and so on and so on, until we'll have 1 over a hugely big number. So our, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, our y gets smaller, smaller, smaller. So that's basically what it'll look like here. x getting bigger, 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 and y getting smaller, 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 until it'll approach this um, horizontal asymptote of y equals 0 only at x equals infinity. So that's what we mean by infinite limits. Now, you'll notice over here that it's approaching the same the same horizontal asymptote of y equals 0, but it's kind of, it's hitting, well it is, hitting it from the bottom instead. So that's because uh, here, um, x has negative values. So 1 over x is going to be negative. So instead of 1 over 10, it's going to be 1 over negative 10, which is, and as our numbers get bigger, we're going to get smaller, 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 closer to 0, but they're always going to be negative values. So it's going to get smaller, 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 closer to 0 until we get negative infinity, or until we get 0 at negative infinity. So that's basically. It's, it's also called n behavior, but it's what happens to the function as x approaches infinity. Okay? So, um, there's a couple general rules, to, or general guidelines to follow when trying to find out infinite limits as um, a function approaches infinity. And trying to find out what that infinite limit is, and trying to figure out where that horizontal limit is. Because it's not always at y equals zero. So, go up here. Let's state our function as f of x equals n of x over d of x, where n of x is our numerator and d of x is our denominator. So keep in mind that the degree of a function is the power of the highest exponent of that function. So the degree of x squared plus 3x plus 2 is, well, 2. That's our highest power, so that's the degree of our function. So and that the degree of a constant is 1, we can make three general rules. If the degree of our numerator is less than the degree of our denominator, then we'll have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. A, good, a perfect example of this is at uh, f of x equals 1 over x. The degree of this is 0, the degree of this is 1. So that means that the um, 
horizontal asymptote is zero, which, hey, we proved that all the way up here, so it must be true, and turns out it is. So, if the degree of our numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is at y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients of the numerator and denominator. So, by leading coefficients, we mean the coefficients of the, the highest degree terms. So, here, the, degrees of our the degree of our numerator is 2, degree of our denominator is 2. So, that means we take the ratio. So, the ratio of our coefficients would be 3 over 4. So, that means we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3 over 4. It's pretty simple, just something we just have to remember now. So, now what happens if the degree of our numerator is greater than the degree of our denominator? Well, then we have a slant curve, or an asymptote, at... Well, the only way to figure that out is to do long division. Okay? So... Take the function f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 4 over x minus 2. Now, to figure out the asymptotes of this function, we first do long division to kind of break it down. So after doing long division, which I won't show you how to do in this video, um, we can see that this function up here equals x plus 4 over x minus 2. So what can we do with this? Well, this means we have a slant asymptote at y equals x. So we ha we'll have an asymptote at the non-remainder part of our uh, resultant function. And then we'll have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Well, that makes sense, because that's the where the denominator of this one equals 0. So, well, we draw our asymptotes. that uh, y equals x and x equals 2 and we because um, the degree of our our numerator and denominator are different we know that our our function will approach infin will get closer and closer to our asymptotes you know because it doesn't always have to get close, sometimes it can get close and then move away. But it'll be closer and closer and closer all the way to infinity, or negative infinity in this case, and just up and down as we get closer and closer to our vertical asymptote value here. So, here we have our asymptotes, and then we just draw a curve around our asymptotes. So it's pretty simple. Now, what happens if our we get a, a slant asymptote, well, if this is, say, x squared term, what does that look like? Well, then we have a quadratic asymptote, or a curve asymptote. So say we have the function f of x equals x cubed plus 15x squared minus 2x plus 12 all over x minus 2. Well, we'll do the same long division trick, and I won't show you, but it comes out to x squared plus 13x plus 32 plus 76 over x minus 2. So what's that mean? That means we have to have a curve asymptote at y equals x squared plus 13x plus 32, and then a vertical asymptote at x equals 2, because that would make this undefined. Okay? So, we draw our asymptotes. This is our curve asymptote, this is our vertical asymptote, and then draw our function around our asymptotes. Now, how do I know to draw in this corner and in this corner as opposed to these and these? Well, that's something you all you have to do is plug in values that are on either side of our asymptote in any of these quadrants, and if any of these values come out, then you know it's on this side. 
See, if I had plugged in a value over here, I would get a value that is more negative, a lower number than the value of my asymptote, the, my curve asymptote at that x value. So then I would know that, oh, my curve is below that asymptote. And you do that for both um, halves of uh, my curve asymptote on either side of the vertical asymptote. So that should be everything you need to know to do horizontal and slant and curve asymptotes and our end behavior functions. They're limits at positive and negative infinity.